Welcome back everyone. Today we've got something that's um, a lot more exciting than it's going to look on the surface. And that is Kingston's new portable SSD XS2000. Now this looks pretty typical bog standard uh, USB-C SSD, but there's a couple of new things going on here. Uh, number one, this is the first one that's marked as USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. So we've got a new interface marking, and I don't actually know how that's going to behave with some of my existing equipment. Um, I think my Z590 Pro 4 test motherboard should support it, but we're going to find out real soon. Um, and that means that it is rated for 20 gig per second operation over USB-C, not 10 gig like a lot of the other drives we've looked at. This is also a lot smaller, and the reason for that is that this is now using a native USB controller instead of a lot of the other drives that we've looked at where even if they were a um, OEM drive from OWC or uh, Mushkin, they were built basically the same way my a Rico drive was, and that is there was an interface chip to translate USB-C to PCIe, and then it had an M2 2280 drive on a stick, effectively. And there's nothing wrong with that, and that has advantages. Um, especially if you're only making a few drives, well, it's cheaper to just take your existing drive and then buy or build some adapter boards then spin up a whole new production line just for this item. But if you're making enough of them, well, this is beneficial. And this controller, at least on paper, looks pretty quick. So let's just uh, do a quick tour of the packaging. So we have five-year warranty, 2,000 meg per second read and write, theoretically, using USB-C. We've got the product name, XS2000. On the back, we've got some more specs, uh, claims to be compatible with USB 2.0 and then 3.2313 on all of your major modern operating systems, although there's a couple of asterisks next to Chrome OS and Linux. And an interesting note I've never seen before, free technical support assistance. Just kind of weird to see on a portable drive. So anyway, let's fight through this plastic. Come on. And to my knowledge, there's only one controller currently that allows you to build a drive this way, and that's from Silicon Motion. Okay, so that's interesting. So we got a USB C to C cable. The drive itself, which is fairly light, let's grab a scale. 29 grams. Does it say how heavy it's supposed to be? No, it's just got a bunch of warranty stuff printed on the inside. No booklet or anything like that. So, 29 grams or 41 with the optional rubber shell. And then that's it. I mean, the drive itself is plastic, appears to be snapped together. Um, we're going to pop it open. All right, so would we look at that? So there's my SM2320G and two NAND packages that say probably Kingston, knowing Kingston. Come on. 
Just want to peel up the sticker a little. Yep, a couple of NAND packages that say Kingston. And real quick, mostly to deal with my curiosity, this is a one terabyte device, and I'm betting it's 512 gigs per package. That is too large. And let's just pop that right out. Nope, 256 gigs per package. So we have four total flash chips. I wonder if that means that it's TLC. I was expecting QLC on this device. However, this appears to be a DRAMless drive. So, maybe. Alright, so... That is it. What I am surprised at is that um, thermally I don't see a whole ton of consideration for the controller itself. So there's a, a squishy, maybe this is a thermal interface pad going to this aluminum shell, but it's, it's foam. It's not anything that I would expect to be really conductive and then I mean this had a sticker on it by the way for whatever it's worth these are Kingston FB 2560 8 UMC 1-7C S2122-3722862.02 and then there's another number on here that is 115719GS-3S-1G. That probably doesn't mean much. It might not be a part number that anyone can find. Um, but anyway. So I want to check something really quick on the documentation on our test bench to see if any of my USB ports are actually rated for 20 gig. So this says that my USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports are only rated for 10 gigs per second, which means I'm going to have to hook this up to our Thunderbolt device, although I don't know how that will behave. Well, I guess that means this gets cut short into an unboxing and uh, a gutting, basically, because none of the USB ports on my Z590 Pro M are going to handle 20 gig unless I go get a Thunderbolt add-in card. Um, to do out of curiosity, let's just plug it in and see. What happens on that front panel USB-C connector? I don't expect anything spectacular. Well, now that's beyond strange. Is that coming through on the microphone? This drive made a sound while it was writing, which I've never heard an SSD making audible noise before. Um, however, for some insane reason, uh, A, the USB-C front panel port on this test bench is only 5 gig, which I had a hunch. Uh, B, it showed up as a SATA 600 device. Device. It showed up as UASP serial ATA. So 
I think that may be a fallback mode for devices that don't support the full 20 gig 3.2 by 2 bandwidth. So I am going to put this back together so that it's in its near factory condition. And we'll be back with the ThinkPad P50, assuming that this does link up at 20 gig when connected to a Thunderbolt port. If not, I'm going to have to buy an add-in card and add it to my test bench. Um, on which note, as far as USB 20 gig add-in cards go, since I may need one of those anyway, if anyone has one that they use and like and would recommend, let me know in the comments below. Um, I do want to thank Kingston for sending this drive out, and by the way, the drive was not harmed in my manhandling of it. I want to thank anyone who helps support Pocketables as always, either via Amazon affiliate link or Patreon at support like that that helps make videos like this possible. I want to thank Electrix for providing my opening and closing themes and finally, thank you for watching.